I think my relationship with minority business development goes back to when I was still in high school. Um, my mother was actually elected official and she actually authored the legislation that created the state of Indiana's minority business program. And at the time, the program was for uh, racial minorities only. It did not include women or veterans or other groups, but over the years that of course has evolved. Um, and, and what it means to be a minority um, has evolved as well. Um, and, you know, I think that um, the pie, as you have, people have probably heard lots of people say, you know, well, the pie doesn't get bigger. You just have to figure out how to slice it, right? Uh, to, to serve all of the constituents uh, that want a piece of the pie. And so um, we try to focus a lot on partnerships. Um, and when you look at opportunities for minority businesses and some of the challenges that minority businesses face, like access to capital. And you, you referenced um, in your opening remarks about the growing population of minorities and that by 2045 or 2050, minorities are going to be the majority in this country. So denying minority businesses access to capital has a negative effect on the economy. And so we need to be more diligent in making sure that we're providing that access to capital, but we're also that, but that we are also setting those minority businesses up to be successful. Um, and when you look at a lot of states and cities, because we want to attract business and industry to our communities, um, and we offer tax breaks and lots of incentives to bring large corporations here, and we ask them to hire folks and, and do other things in the community. But the one thing we don't ask them to do is to make a commitment to spending dollars with minority women, veteran, LGBTQ. I think that's a next step that, that should happen. 